Well, hello, hello. Thank you so very much for tuning in and uh, really excited about today's live stream. We are going a little bit earlier today because hopefully Dr. Miller and myself and Dr. Miller will have a little date night tonight. Maybe go get us a Christmas tree and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but I did want to make sure that we popped in here and did another session reading an excerpt from the new book, The Plant-Based Diet for Beginners. And uh, just wanted to thank everybody who's already either reviewed it, checked it out, purchased it. Um, uh, we're really excited about it. It's going to change a lot of lives this holiday season. And as we get into the um, thinking about getting into New Year's resolutions, right? Let's uh, let's jump on those early or let's not get to the point where we have to have them. But a question came up and there's been a lot of things happening in the um, online scene of a plant-based diet with the Game Changers coming out and being on popular podcasts and episodes. And uh, a lot of questions have come in to myself asking, what is a plant-based diet? Or more specifically, they'll hear, what is a whole foods plant-based diet? And uh, thank you so much for everybody tuning in and go on and uh, leave a comment or question and just tell me where you're viewing in from. I really appreciate it. Uh, but the question remains, what is a whole foods plant-based diet? Does that mean that you just go to Whole Foods every day and, uh, you know, some people like to call it whole paycheck, but you go there every single night and you pick up whatever you want and that's a whole food plant diet? No, no. Uh, a whole food plant-based diet, as described by research and um, with the, you know, a lot of wherewithal of, uh, well, let's, let's read what the plant-based diet for beginners has to say. So, 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 so. What is a plant-based diet? In recent years, the term plant-based has grown in popularity, but it still means different things to different people. Some think a plant-based diet consists mostly of plant foods, but allows some animal products. Others consider it a vegan diet consisting of anything without a mother or a face. In this book, I would like to introduce you to a whole foods plant-based diet, also known as WFPB. Here, we define a plant-based diet as one built around plant foods that are minimally processed. It excludes animal pro products and limits the use of salt, oil, and sugar. And uh, going more furly, it also excludes the use of oil uh, and uh, really minimizes the use of salt and sugar. But let's keep reading. A whole food plant-based whole food plant -based diet contains two things, right? It contains whole foods and then plant-based. So let's dive into that. Whole foods under the subsection here. And again, we're jumping in here on the plant-based diet for beginners. Whole foods. Whole foods are foods eaten in their natural state or as close to it as possible. Some examples are fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, including beans, peas, lentils, and whole grains, including brown rice, quinoa, and oats. Compared to diets that include highly processed foods, whole food diets are lower in calories, higher in fiber, and more conducive to a healthy body weight. Research on the health effects of whole foods includes a two, including a 2009 study in the, journal, in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and a 2006 study in Diabetes Care shows that they provide many advantages, including better health outcomes for those suffering from heart disease and diabetes. And then we go into plant-based foods, right? We cover the whole foods part of it. Let's talk about the plant-based side. And this is... Um, you know, this is just to clear things up, right? This isn't to overcomplicate things or make things um, more wordy than they should be. But if you have a question about what is a whole food plant-based diet or what should the whole foods look like or what should the plant-based foods look like or what does this all mean, I'm hoping this uh, clears the air a little bit. So here we go. Plant-based foods. Plant-based foods are those that don't come from animal sources like meat, dairy, eggs, and seafood. You might also know them as vegan. The whole food plant-based diet allows all whole plant foods as well as some plant-based foods that may be slightly more processed as long as they aren't highly refined and don't contain any added salt, oil, or sugar. Many lightly processed plant foods can be, can be used as healthy alternatives to commonly commonly consumed animal-based foods, such as cashew milk instead of cow's milk, a tofu scramble instead of scrambled eggs, and shredded jackfruit instead of pulled pork. And I've included the page number to where we make those recipes and use those ingredients in the book and in the, the ebook as well. Some other great plant-based foods included in a whole food plant-based diet are whole grain pastas and breads, corn tortillas, and many homemade sauces, dressings, and dips. Here we go. It's important to note that a healthy whole food plant-based diet, or WFPB, is built around whole plant foods in addition to those slightly more processed plant-based foods. Together, they help ensure that we can change our current health for the better and also improve our chances of living longer and more active lives. And so, 
If you have any questions about what is included in a whole food plant-based diet or what is a whole food plant-based diet, what are whole foods and what are plant-based foods, uh, let's discuss it here in the comments. But I did just want to kind of go over this a little bit more just to really make sure that we're clear on the subject. When we're talking about a whole food plant-based diet, the bulk, the base, where you should be getting the majority of your calories, if not all your calories, are going to be from whole plant sources, whole foods, including like things like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, fruits and vegetables, right? Green leafy vegetables. There's a thousand different fruits out there. It's, it's, there's a plethora of whole plant foods that you could be building a diet around and just in eating in, as, as is. Uh, but to make things a little bit more enjoyable and also to make things uh, even more relatable to those maybe coming from a standard American diet or those maybe coming from you know a, a less healthy way of eating or just any way of eating, uh, plant-based foods are great options. Now, I'm not talking about going to the grocery store and searching their plant-based section, which is pretty much a bunch of salt, oil, sugar that has just and, and protein isolates that has been um, homogenized together using machines to make it look and taste like the animal-based product that it's trying to you know be like. Because a lot of times they're made to be the exact same thing. And so what do you think it's going to do to your health, ladies and gentlemen? Pretty much the exact same thing. Now, some may be a little bit healthier and some uh, clearly have better uh, from ethical standpoints and also from environmental standpoints. I'm not here to argue that part. I'm here to argue what you're putting in your body and uh, what really is in a whole foods plant-based diet. And so just like we talked about, I like to consider a lot of the plant-based foods, the ones that we're going to be including on a healthy plant-based diet, ones that we've included in the plant-based diet for beginners, as ones that are similar that, that are made to be a great healthy replacement to those animal-based foods. And again, I've mentioned them. I'll mention them again here. Things like plant-based milks. So is it the whole food? No, it's not whole oats like we have in our pantry or cashews like we might, you might have in your cashew. No, but they've been lightly processed, including pretty much just mixing them with water and blending them up, especially if you're making them at home, like we've got the cashew milk and oat milk recipes in the, in the book. Um, are they the whole food form? No, but are they slightly processed? And, you know, are they something that you're going to, you know, are they going to be det detrimental to your health? No. Also, are you going to be basing a diet around them? No. So they are a good addition to a plant-based diet, a healthy whole food plant-based diet. And we've also got things like tofu scrambles. If you've, you know, a lot of people say, well, what can I have for scrambled eggs? Well, tofu, minimally processed uh, soy food. It's you know, soybeans and water most of the time. Uh, are you building your diet around it? Are you basing your diet around it? No, but is it a addition to a plant-based diet that you could eat and still reach your health goals? Yes, it is. And things like things like the shredded jackfruit, there's just a lot of different options out there. The plant-based milks are really my favorite to kind of talk about as the plant-based part of it, right? Not plant-based that says plant-based at the grocery store, the big, big, big box store that says plant-based, uh, because a lot of times those are going to be your not healthy options. We're talking about whole foods that are slightly minimally processed, that are very close to their whole form, and or have, you know, don't have a thousand other ingredients included. The whole food part is pretty simple, right? If it came, if it grew from the ground and it looks like your grandma probably understands what fruit and vegetable or starch or, you know, legume that is, that is probably going to be healthy and you should be building a diet around. And those are the simple starchy staples most of the time. Foods like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, um, the foods that people and populations, I say it again and again, but the foods that people and populations have built healthy diets around for thousands of years, lived long, healthy lives without being plagued by the chronic diseases that are running rampant in the modern world, the standard American diet world, diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. Uh, and so... Those are the foods that you should be building your diet around. It really doesn't have to be that hard, right? It's pretty simple. Um, the recipes included, and and you don't have to have to book to follow, you know to to understand the whole food plant based diet and or ingredients or recipes included, right? Forksoverknives.com, brandnewvegan.com, eatplantbased.com are some great resources. Marley Ficalor is doing great work over there at Produce Section Challenge. There's a lot of great things happening in the community, but it can be tough when someone's beginning a plant based diet. And they go to the grocery store and they see a big sign, big old flashing sign, big bright letters on there saying, plant-based, plant-based, plant-based. And you go there and you can pick up all the processed junk and all pretty much, again, it's all salt, sugar, oil, and isolated protein, uh, you know, isolated protein that's been mixed together in a machine 
you know, expeller pressed out to be the form of the meat-based analog. And so that is not what you should be including in your diet. That's not something that you should be regularly eating in your diet. And it's not something that's going to maximize your health outcome. And that's where a lot of people get stuck, right? They get stuck. They say, I'm going to begin a plant-based diet. I'm going to begin a whole food plant-based diet. I'm going to get on that vegan diet to, uh, you know, if you're getting on a vegan diet to better your health, then, and they go to the store and they see the, the, the plant-based logo or the vegan and the, and the, and the vegan sign, Hey, the vegan section. And while there are great options there, right? That's where you're going to find your plant-based milks. That's where you're going to find your, you know, your, your, but that's not where you're going to be building your diet around. That's not what you're going to be basing the bulk of your, you know, your whole food plant-based diet around the whole food part is what we're really focusing on. And those are foods like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, sweet potatoes, fruits and vegetables like bananas, apples, oranges, vegetables like green leafy vegetables, Swiss chard, collards, kale, carrots, bell peppers, jalapenos. Um, those are, well, those are fruits actually, if you want to get comp complicated or foods like the background here. What do we have? We have some onions. We've got some apples, bananas, acorn squash, We've got garlic. We've got butternut squash. We've got pears. We've got some nuts down there. It it does not have to be complicated, ladies and gentlemen. And that is what we're really, really focusing on. Let's see if we have any questions. I hope everybody's having a beautiful Friday. I know we're jumping on here a little early. So if you're watching this, you're probably watching the replay. Um, well, not everybody who's tuning in. We got a lot of people tuning in. We're going to get to questions here live, but um, I hope you've had a wonderful week and uh, leading up to the weekend. If you're not excited about the weekend, uh, then you're probably not a football fan because we've got the Big Ten Championship. We've got the Pac-12 Championship tonight, Utah and Oregon. We've got the Big, 12 cha Big Ten Championship, Big 12 Championship, and the SEC Championship tomorrow. It's going to have to be a great weekend for football. I'm excited, but I'm even more excited about talking about a whole food plant-based diet and the plant-based diet for beginners and um, really all things plant-based that are going to be helping us achieve our maximum health outcomes. Let's see if we got some questions. Sherry tuned, got in here for the start of the live. I love it. Rose is here. Betsy's here from Virginia Beach. Betsy, love to hear it. Love to hear it. Shannon's here. Sherry said, love it, love it. Just outside of Gettysburg. Pam's here. Renee and Stefan are here. Brenda's here. Brent's here. Let's see here. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Uh, Terry's here. Can't wait to get your book. I'm so excited for you to get the book, Terry. Uh, I will say, hey, it ships out. Well, I, it it releases officially December 10th. It sounds like Amazon is already starting to get things shipped, and some people are going to be receiving it on the 10th. Others, I believe, will be having it begin the shipping process on the 10th. But here's the deal. Next week, you're going to get the book in. And if you got some for gifts, you're going to have them in before um, before the holiday season to gift them out. I'm really excited about that. And uh, Barnes & Noble apparently already started shipping books. And if you're in the Richmond, Virginia area or the Virginia, the, vic the vicinity of this area, we are hosting a book release party at Hangspace next Tuesday, 1210 from 7 to 830 here in Richmond. And uh, we're super stoked about it. But yeah, it's... Uh, we, we, I really do believe it's going to have the chance to really change a lot of lives this holiday season, change lives like mine, losing a hundred pounds, regaining my health after breaking my back and, you know, ending my college football career, which I was able to beat the Georgia Bulldogs in the Gator Bowl, which they've got a big game this weekend against LSU. But, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, we beat them pretty good there. So we'll see how they do this weekend, but breaking my back, ending my college football career. But then I, you know, finding my way to a plant-based diet and really regaining my health, but then seeing my mom, my dad, my sister, my in-laws, my grandparents, cousins, friends, all receive not if not only similar benefits that I did, but even more so, right? Because because I had, you know, I was overweight and I clearly had physical problems with the back, but I wasn't at the point where I was, you know, in and out of hospitals, medicated, hooked up to machines on every pill, potion, prescription under the sun that anybody would write for you, you know, but I've seen those people experience the benefits that I have. And that's what I'm really, really excited about. Uh, Carrie said, where do you find ca jackfruit? Canned veggies aisle? Carrie, I find it. So if you have a Trader Joe's, that's a kind of a good local place that I know a lot of people have within the driving vicinity. Uh, Trader Joe's is a good option. The only thing is they've only got it in the brine. And I actually had someone ask a question yesterday, but I really prefer uh, when I get jackfruit like canned that I'm going to use in things like the, you know, pull, you know, barbecue jackfruit on the cover of the book with my easy Asian slaw. But, uh, 
I really prefer to find canned jackfruit. Now, it's not always possible, and I will get canned jackfruit in brine. 100% I will. I'll get it from Trader Joe's, but if I can find it that's in water, it's even better because I find the biggest complaint people have about young green jackfruit, which is what you're going to be making these recipes out of, using it as a shredded pulled pork substitute, right? Pulled pork substitute. Uh, you're not going to want to use the ones you find at the grocery store because those are sweet, ripened jackfruit, which are not going to be what you want. What you're going to be looking for is the young green jackfruit that's in a canned form. I really like to find it in the in water form because it doesn't have that briny taste, which a lot of people are against. Well, they just don't like the taste of the brine, which is 100% understandable. Uh, here's my best places to find it. Now, if you don't have a Trader Joe's, you know, Trader Joe's has it in, you know, in brine. But if you have some international markets, we have we had some we had an Asian market in Nebraska while we were students that we could find it at pretty easily. Here in Virginia, we've got an international market that has it in like four or five different brands. You can find it uh, really great. And if you if you don't have those sources, we also have a, um, an Indian grocery store that we drive by once a week, and we are able to pick it up there as well. So if you if you look for those kind of international style markets, grocery stores, that's where you're going to be find your best bet. If you don't have say a Trader Joe's there, um, and and you can always ask them, but it's normally in the kind of the canned fruit section, uh, even though it's not a sweet fruit. And then uh, if you don't have that, you can buy it online. I know Amazon has a few different options and I'm not sure if any other online grocers do, but Amazon would be a good one to check. So uh, that's kind of the, the route that we go when we're getting jackfruit. Patty says, how do you stay on track eating whole food plant-based during the holidays when most people at holiday gatherings aren't whole food plant-based or when your family in a restaurant? Any tips? Much appreciated. Well, Patty, I've got some videos, some video links that I'd love to send you, or if you want to go check them out. This past week, we've done a video. We've done live streams every single night, but we did one on how to keep it whole food plant-based while dining out. So that's a real good one to check out, like an hour talk on all, you know, the first 30 minutes or, you know, really where you're going to get the tips, tricks, and really the the, the benefic- benefit of it. We also answer a lot of questions in there. And then I also did a few this past week on keeping it whole food plant-based for the holidays, right? Really figuring that out. But here's, if you don't have time to do that, and again, if you just go back to the archives of the videos, that's where you can you can find those pretty easily. Uh, here's my take on two things. Uh, we'll, we'll cover the one that eating whole food plant-based during the holidays. Well, here's what I do. I always be, I'm always prepared. And so I, first of all, I understand going into a holiday get together that absolutely in no circumstances am I going to eat you know animal products or uh, standard American diet fare, right? That's full of oil, cheese, meat, and uh, because when I go to that holiday get together, I see my aunt, uncles, you know, all the people who are experiencing the 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 end result of eating that food, right? 300 pounds, overweight, type 2 diabetes. And it's not like they're hiding it, right? Because when you sit down at the holiday table, the only thing that anybody wants to talk about, unfortunately, that you know, most when you get together, is doctor put me on another 15 medications for you know heart disease or you know, type 2, my diabetes, I'm pre-diabetic, and my cholesterol and my high blood pressure. All you hear, and my knees are aching, my back's hurting, my skin's broken out. I just... You know, it's Uncle Buck and Aunt Becky taking over the table, talking about how terrible life's been this year, and you're sitting there watching them eat cheesy, you know, cheesy chicken, chicken, whatever, with a side of pumpkin, you know, whatever, you know, just eating standard American diet fare. You know why they're sick. It's no surprise to you, but they want to tell everybody that it's their genetics or their doctor just thinks it's been a bad year, this or that. Uh, And so for number one, under no circumstances, am I going to be going back and eating that junk because I can see what it's doing to my loved ones who are, you know, dying slow deaths by the food that they're eating, some quicker than others, and becoming a burden, burden to maybe yourself or the family that's around them because of what they're choosing to eat. So that's number one. Number two is I'm always going to be prepared in the idea that I'm going to bring a dish with me. If we're traveling, we're going to you know make something ahead of time where we're staying, or we're going to if we're if it's in our local area, we're going to be able to you know cook it at our home. But I'm always going to cook a big casserole sized dish of something that's whole food plant based that I know that I'm going to be able to eat while I'm there at that get together. And number two that I know I'm going to be able to share with my loved ones to hopefully introduce this way of eating. And if not, then just 
have enough to bring home for the next day, right? It's no skin off my back. If I bring a healthy whole food plant-based dish, enjoy the heck out of it at the get together and then nobody else eats it. Meh, whatever, whatever. Uh, their loss, my gain, I guess. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully you don't have anything to bring back because it's so tasty that everybody wants some or everybody tries some. Um, and that's the way to go. Um, and so it's, it really, it can be a frustrating time though, especially if you're the only one who's eating this way at your family get together. I will say that that was the case for a very long time. Uh, not a very long time. Cause right. It was the case for maybe a holiday season. Right. Um, but it's, it's gotten so much better because I've been able to introduce so many family members to this that maybe they don't eat this way, but maybe they're going to create something that they know, hey, I kept the oil out, no animal products, it's plant, all plant-based, healthy plant-based. I did that for you. Well, that's great. I love that. But then beyond that, you're going to hopefully get some family members that in the, in the next year, you're not going to be the only one that's complaining about there not being any whole food plant-based dishes. Or here's the other thing, like I got to experience this year because I've been able to help and see my family, most of my family, become plant-based beginners, become plant-based novices, and now working their way to plant-based experts. Um, but I got to experience a thing where it wasn't a holiday table full of meat, dairy, eggs, fish, and you know, junk standard American diet crap. It was actually a table full of plant-based stuff, so you weren't searching for this or that. You were saying, great, 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 great. Uh, it was a blessing, and it was quite fantastic and something that I wish on absolutely every single one of you uh, to be able to get to experience that and not just to get experience one, once like a once you know get to experience it every single holiday season um, but really I'm always prepared I'm gonna bring something and if it's just you know a fruit tray or a veggie tray if I'm just gonna get by that's fine remember the holiday season is not about the food that you're gorging yourself with to you know, that's going to bring you to an earlier grave. That is crazy. And that's how a lot of people think about it. Um, unfortunately, they think it's all about the food. It's all about the food. Well, it's about the fellowship. It's about the time with family. And uh, if some people can't get past that and think, oh gosh, you're eating this or that, that's, you know, why don't you just have a break? You say, you know what? You don't worry about me and what I'm eating. I'm eating healthy this year. And here's the other thing. I don't want to hear any more about the new prescription your doctor put you on. I don't want to hear any more about how you gained 15 pounds because of it. I don't want to hear any more about how your legs are all swollen. I don't want to hear any more about how your back's hurting, about how your knees are aching, because you are doing it to yourself three times a day and here especially as a holiday season. So that's kind of my take. You don't have to be so poignant with your approach, but uh, I do like to keep it real around the holidays. Uh, also eating out, plan ahead, call the restaurant, you know, a lot of times you could get eat off this, uh, the, the side menu, uh, bring your own salad dressing many times, you know, pretty much that's standard. You're going to bring your own salad dressing. Um, but if you're going out to a meal where you're expecting to have a big, you know, meal, then call ahead, uh, you know, give the, give the chef, the restaurant a day or so in advance, let them know you're, Hey, I don't, Hey, no oil. I want no animals just, uh, you know, and normally they're pretty, they're pretty, um, accommodating on it. You know, we cover that in the book, how to eat out while you're, you know, whole food plant-based. Um, and I did a whole video on that. I would recommend checking that one out, Patty. Terry says, get mine at Trader Joe's. Can I love to hear it, Terry? Sherry says, jackfruit is usually in the aisle uh, or, or at, where she says she gets it at the grocery store, but she also says it's on Amazon and some natural food and Asian stores. Yes, yes, yes. Maritza says, hello, hello. Shakisha said, hey, hello. Lauren is here from Northeastern California. I'm hoping you're having beautiful weather there. Beverly's, Beverly's tuned in. I made a few of your recipes. Can't wait to get my cookbook. I'm so excited for you to get that book, Beverly. So excited. Sherry says, many times Amazon ships early. Should have it by, I'd love to hear that, Sherry. I'm so excited for you to get the physical copy of the book because I know you've been enjoying um, the Kindle version of the book. Bobby says, hey, from Jackson, Mississippi. Good to hear you. Good to hear from you. Sherry says, yes, yes, yes. Sue says, hello from North Carolina. Hello, Sue. Glad to have you in. Betsy's in here saying she gets hers from the international grocery stores as well, the jackfruit. Um, wow, that's awesome. Lorna gets hers from a local grocery store. That's good. And you may be able to request it as well. Um, so I love to hear it. Uh, so, sounds like Sherry was sauteing some barbecue cabbage. That sounds interesting. Sounds good though. Margarita is tuned in from Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks for having tuning in. Jean's tuned in. Margarita shared the post. Angela's tuned in. Hey, Angela. Um, Betty says that poppy seed dressing looked delicious. I'm so excited to hear that. I'm glad to hear it. I hope you give it a try. It's really, really good. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. Angela says she's waiting for her copy. Hi from Virginia. So excited to have you on here. Um, but yeah, so today, if you're just tuning in or if we're, you know, we're covering it here, we're talking all about what is a whole food plant-based diet. Keep it really simple. 
It doesn't have to be too complicated. Eat foods, right, that people in populations have eaten for thousands of years, built their diets around. Things like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, right? We can think of those foods and people in populations that were they fat, overweight, in and out of hospitals? No, they didn't have hospitals. Were they were they a burden to their family and friends? No, because they couldn't because they were, you know, had a lot to do. Uh, but but were they trim, healthy, fit individuals that ate low on the food chain, meaning they ate things like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, fruits, and vegetables? Yes, they were. They lived long, healthy lives, worked long into their years, and... Um, yeah, and that was the food, the food, the food, the food. And so that's really what we're trying to cover here. Again, uh, we were talking about what is a whole food plant-based diet. I guess I will um, just read the, I'll read the whole foods part here again, just so we make sure we're clear on it. Whole foods are foods eaten in their natural state or as close to it as possible. Some examples are fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, and whole grains. Compared to diets that include highly processed foods, whole food diets are lower in calories, higher in fiber, and more conducive to healthy body weights. Research on the health effects of whole foods, including a 2009 study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and a 2006 study in Diabetes Care, shows that they provide, they being whole food, plant-based diets, they provide many advantages, including better health outcomes for those suffering from heart disease and diabetes. And how do you cook those or how do you implement those whole plant foods into your diet? Do it really, really simply, really simply. Start with the simple starchy staples. I say it all the time, but the simple starchy staples, the three S's, foods like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa. We're going to find our favorite way to cook them. And lucky for you, we've included, we've included, I've included in the plant-based diet for beginners, how to cook many common simple starchy staples like chickpeas, squash, lentils, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, red potatoes, white potatoes, brown rice, quinoa, foods that you may be familiar with already or that uh, you may want to get familiar with to build your diet around. And not only do are you going to look at how do I cook them, you know, how do I cook them? But how do I cook them in my favorite way? Because I've included how to cook them in the oven, how to cook them on the stovetop, how to cook them in the pressure cooker, how to cook them in the slow cooker um, for ver all those various simple starchy staples. So whether you like baking your potatoes or sweet potatoes, whether you like steaming or cooking your, your rice in the instant pot, or you like cooking your beans on the stovetop, you're going to find out how to cook them and, um, and how to do it simply, right? We want to keep it simple. So we have those cooked simple starchy staples. Now what do we do? Well, my, I like to do this. I like to batch cook enough of them so that I can take that pot of instant or the, take that instant pot full of brown rice, instant pot full of black beans or pinto beans, that oven full of 10 pounds of potatoes or sweet potatoes that I've baked, take them out, let them cool, and I'm going to set those in the fridge so that throughout the week, you know, we'll eat some right away. It's it's always tough to have a big pot of brown rice um, cook in the instant pot and you don't just, you know, start eating, you know, a few bowlfuls, uh, which is great which is great. And, uh, but I have those in the fridge so that throughout the week I can take some brown rice. I can take some beans. I can take, some, I can warm it up. You, if you got a toaster oven, do that. If you got a microwave, do that. You want to put it, I put it on the stovetop. You can a little vegetable broth in there. And then I'm going to add my favorite salsa, right? And maybe a little seasonings, maybe a little cumin, maybe a little chili powder, maybe a little garlic and onion powder. It's up to you. And I've got an easy meal that I've done in three minutes in the microwave, eight minutes in the toaster oven, you know, you figure it out. Seven minutes on the stovetop, not hard to warm those up. You could also have it cold if you'd like. Uh, but that's how we're going to do it really simply. That's super simple. But uh, beyond that, if we want to start making some more, and you could do the same thing with potatoes, right? Slice them up, put them in the oven, those baked potatoes, slice them up, warm them up real quick, dip them in your favorite sauce, and uh, you're ready to go with a really easy, simple whole food plant-based meal. Uh, but if we want to take those whole plant foods and we want to go a little bit more exotic, a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, Instagram worthy, right? I might say, uh, you can go ahead and flip to the back of the book or go on any of the you know great websites, but uh, look up some easy recipes like the savory split pea soup. So we're taking simple starchy staples dried green peas, dried split peas, and we're going to make a simple soup. But we're also going to take things like those that cooked rice and those cooked beans. And then we've got, remember, we've got those simple starchy staples, not only in our fridge cooked and ready to go, but also in our pantry for foods like oats. And so we're going to take 
those cooked brown rice, that cooked brown rice, those cooked beans, and we're going to bring them out, out of the fridge. We're going to mix them with some oats, some rolled oats or quick cooking oats. And uh, we're going to make some bean burgers. We're going to make some falafel burgers if we've got some chickpeas on hand. We're going to make three, two, one burgers if we've got just any type of bean, any all the rice, and we've got some oats. We're going to be good and ready to go there. And so the key is, can you keep it simple? Can you keep it healthy? Can you keep it delicious? And if you're able to do that as a beginner, then you're going to be able to become a novice, then you're going to be able to become an expert, then you're going to become someone who takes a plant-based diet and makes it a plant-based lifestyle. And that is the big goal because as we think about the holiday season and approaching on New Year's resolutions this upcoming, you know, when we get into January, the big question is, how do I keep for making the same mistakes that I've made every single year. I try this, it works for a few days, a few, a month or two, but then I get off track and I can't keep it going and I run into all these problems. How do I, how do I stay on the tracks and make this not just, not just commit to try to do it for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, but how do I make this not a diet, but a lifestyle? And the key is keep it simple, plan ahead, right? It, it does help to batch hook, cook some things. Now, I'm not saying that you have to batch cook whole recipes and take nine hours on every single Sunday afternoon to, you know, or stay up till the midnight hours cooking these batch cooking recipes and all this stuff that some propose, you know, some propose. Uh, what I am saying is take 45 minutes on a weekday, a weekend, and batch cook that rice in the Instant Pot or batch cook that rice on the stovetop enough for four, five, six, seven days um, for whoever, you know, however you're much. If you've got a family of 12, then it's probably going to be tough to keep enough rice for a family of 12 um, in the fridge for a whole week. So you may have to make it twice a week. Uh, and God bless you if you have a family of 12. Uh, but, <laughs> but if you, you know, you, so that's where we're really going to be focusing our energy on in the batching is batch cooking those simple starchy staples, rice, beans, potatoes, corn, quinoa sweet potatoes. Um, and, uh, the, you know, we've got oats in the pantry. We might have some black, you know, we may have some black beans or some canned pinto beans in the, in the pantry as well. Uh, but, but we're going to keep those simple starchy staples on hand, ready, ready to go so that we're never more than a few minutes away from a cooked, healthy, whole food, plant-based meal. And that will keep you on track, ready to go. And you can, you know, and you can take those simple starchy staples and make them into tasty recipes, or you could just keep them really simple and, you know, make a burrito bowl out of some brown rice, some black beans, a little bit of seasoning and some salsa, or maybe just brown rice, black beans and salsa, or your favorite taco sauce. You don't have to make it too complicated. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible so that we're really focused on making this not a diet, but a lifestyle. And that is the big goal. Let's see if we have a few more questions here. Um, We do have a few more questions. All right. Maybe... Maybe not questions, but uh, just comments. Love it, love it. Uh, Shelly says, love how simple your recipes are. So delicious. Love to hear that. Rebecca said, can't wait to get your get the copy of the book. I'm so excited for you to get that, Rebecca. Um, let's see here. Nicole said, hi, from Arizona. I love watching your live videos. Well, I'm so glad that you love them. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. Chris says... Hi, from Central New York. Looking forward to receiving my copy soon. Chris, I am so excited for you to get your copy of The Plant-Based Diet for Beginners. And I say that to, you know, when people say they're excited to get the copy or, you know, I really do 1 million percent mean it, believe it, live it. That as excited as you are to get that, I'm just so excited for, because I understand that the power that this information, this knowledge really can have on whether you're a beginner or whether you're someone who is a plant-based eater that's going to be getting a copy to gift someone, to share with your loved ones, to share with family or friends. Um, The information here is the information, the handbook that I wish I would have had as I was losing 100 pounds. As I, It was the information I wish I would have had as I was helping my mom, dad, sister, in-laws, grandparents, cousins, friends adopt a plant-based diet. And so the information, the trials, the tribulations, um, what I think would be as most helpful without overcomplicating it is here in this book. And I really hope that everybody enjoys it. And uh, if you do enjoy it and you do get a copy, go ahead and make sure you leave a review or, and you enjoy it and you get a copy. You can do whatever you want. Um, hopefully you gift, you know, hopefully you share the information, but also it means the world to me. If you go to wherever you got the book, Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, target.com and, uh, leave a review on Amazon. It means the world to me. I know we've gotten a lot of, uh, good reviews on there. Cause a lot of people who are, who are looking to purchase the book or coming into the new year, thinking about everybody thinking about new year's resolutions, plant-based diets going to be really trendy here. And, uh, we don't want them, you know, we don't want someone to go on there and 
and get sidetracked with something that's not so much sound in uh, the research and uh, the evidence. And so having those reviews there that someone can look on and say, wow, okay, this is the book that I feel comfortable um, basing this new resolution or new way of eating around. And so that really does help out a ton. And I really appreciate everybody who has already and everybody who will once they get the book. Um, Austin says he's waiting for the book. So excited for you to get one, Austin. Uh, Mary says, hi from Washington State. Can't wait for my book to get here. So excited. Well, I'm so excited. Hannah's tuned in. Thanks for tuning in, Hannah. Patty is here. Amazon says mine is on the way. Yes, yes. Um, sorry, I think we might've got a little loud there. The mic is, I'm looking at my thing. It's looking a little hot. So if you're in like listening to headphones and that hurt, I apologize, but, uh, so excited to hear that. So it sounds like, well, Friday, yeah, the book will, the book's going to get out by, I, it, it sounds like a lot of people are going to be getting their book by Tuesday, which I was under the, under the understanding that the book was going to ship out Tuesday and probably get delivered like the 12th or 13th or 14th that, you know, next week. But it sounds like that they're starting shipping already. So really excited about that. And, um, yeah, yeah. And if you are in the Richmond area and you don't have a copy yet, or you don't, or if you, you know, you were planning on getting another copy or whatever, uh, or if you just want to come hang out, remember at Hangspace next Tuesday, December 10th, the release party is happening. Dr. Miller will be there. I'll be there. I'll be talking about my plant-based journey. I'll be signing some books. We'll have some books there for sale. And um, yeah, it's just going to be a great time. So really excited about that. Uh, kind of a, just a get together here, a holiday season. We can all get together. People like-minded people um, just enjoying a plant-based diet and all the wonderful benefits that it has to offer. And that is something I am very, very, very excited about. Uh, Marley's tuned in. Thanks for tuning in, Marley. We actually gave, gave the produce section challenge a shout out just, oh, well, we've been going for 36 minutes and I think it was probably about seven or eight minutes in. So uh, Marley got a little shout out there and I was tuned in. So wonderful time. And why not go check out the produce section challenge right now if you if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, so we're really excited and um, talking about what is a whole food plant-based diet. And so <laughs> here's the thing you're going to, and to go back on the question about the holidays and Here's what I get, right? Talking about a holiday time and you know, how do you how do you manage being around family and loved ones who don't eat a plant-based diet or make fun of you about eating a plant-based diet or just a thousand things and and we've got some family here, so it's it's great. Um but here's uh here here's the thing. And I, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's experienced this or who's going to experience it this holiday season or who's experienced it the last holiday season, but you're going to hear this, this holiday season, everybody's going to hear, oh, you're eating, you know, they've listened to a, you know, a non-science backed podcast or show, or they've saw something on the news. They've seen some, you know, this or that, right? While your, your whole year, right? Well, this past year, we'll just give an example. You say you've been eating a plant-based diet for eight months. You've lost 30 pounds. You've gotten off your blood pressure medications. You've gotten off your, you know, insulin, you know, you've got your, you've reversed your type two diabetes, um, but all by, all by eating simple starchy staples, rice, beans, potatoes, corn, quinoa, sweet potatoes. And, um, you know, you've never felt better. Your energy levels are up. Your, you know, your eyes are glowing and you get to holiday season. That eight months has been the best eight months of your life so far. And you've got uncle buck, you know, or cousin buck or cousin Becky or aunt Becky. And, um, and they'll sit down next to you at the holiday table, you know, full of standard American fare. You're there eating your healthy plant-based dish that you've brought to the table. But um, they're there and they say, you know what? I've been doing keto this year and I've never felt better. I'm kind of worried about all those carbohydrates you're eating, right? That could be Uncle Buck, Cousin Buck, Aunt Becky, Nephew Buck. And, uh, you know, you're sitting around table and they're real worried about, you know, this, you know, real worried about you. Um, eating all those carbohydrates and you're like, I've lost 30 pounds. I've never felt better. I got off my medications. How long have you been doing keto or how long have you been low carb or how long have you been doing the new, you know, whatever. And, uh, they'll say, well, I've been doing it for three weeks and I've never felt better. I, I haven't lost any weight, but I'm putting on muscle and man, I just feel great. It's like, okay, okay, okay. Well, this might happen. This might happen this year and, or it might've happened last year or the year before for you. And, and, and the true story here, the names have changed, the places have changed, but the people are still the same. And, uh, you know, you get to the next holiday season and, uh, you know, you sit next to uncle buck. Not only have you now gotten to your healthy body weight after 20 months of eating a plant-based diet, you've lost 
a total of 75 pounds. You've gotten down to a healthy body weight, healthy body mass. Um, you've completely off all your medications. You're exercising daily now just because you love how exercising feels. You're more active than you've been in the past two decades and things are going great. And there's Uncle Buck, Cousin Buck, you know, nephew, niece Buck or Becky. And uh, and they sit down next to you and they say, I'm still just so worried about you eating all those carbohydrates. You know, I listened to this podcast or I saw on the news and you're going to be deficient in that or aren't you worried about... And, and, and honest to God, the people and places have changed. Stories are the same. Uh, Uncle Buck says this. I really think you should try out keto. I did it. I started doing it right before last year and I feel great. And Uncle Buck, right? Cousin Buck, who was already 40 pounds, 50 pounds overweight last year before they got on keto is now 57, 58 pounds overweight. And I apologize about the camera come back. My picture will come back. So they've not only gained 10 pounds, they're worried about you who's putting on, you know, who's gotten to your healthy body weight, but they're worried about you who's down to a healthy body weight and they've gained 10 pounds last year. And, and here's their, here's their response. Yeah, but it's muscle and I feel great. And it's, you know, that meat and fat is just wonderful. Well, okay, Uncle Buck. Uh, you got off all your medications. No, I actually had to start blood pressure medication this year because it's just genetics. Oh, okay. Okay. Cousin Buck. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, you've, you, you feel great. You're exercising. Well, I actually had an injury. My knee's bugging me, but, I, but I, I, okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, that goes on and you know, you just kind of have to deal with it. But, but ladies and gentlemen, that was again, not an isolated incident. Uh, we're talking about people who are going to be around us this holiday season who, are going to have listened to different news sources or different, you know, outlooks on things and have heard different things. And what, here's the, here's the funny thing. It's not funny. It's sad. Here's the sad part of it. Your loved ones are going to be more worried about you being protein deficient and amino acid deficient and be, you know, wilting away and, you know, you know, all these things that they're worried about because they heard all these w things on a plant-based, of a plant-based diet, while they themselves are following fad diets who have no long-term research on it. And uh, they've gained weight. They've put on fat. They're clogging their arteries. They're getting on medication, but they themselves are worried about you who has lost weight, gotten down to a healthy body weight, is regained all that energy they lost in the past couple of decades, gotten off their medications, and is glowing from head to toe. So that is what that's what you're up against this holiday season. Now, how you deal with it could be a little different. Maybe you turned Uncle Buck, like some have, and you say, you know what, Uncle Buck, cousin Buck, that keto thing. I'm sure it's doing great for you, but you look horrible. And maybe you don't say that. Maybe you don't say that. Um, but you know what, after a couple of years, a holiday get together, sitting next to cousin Buck, who's, you know, doing this or that, and they've put on 15 pounds of fat and you know, it's the best thing in the world. You say, you know what, cousin Buck, aunt Becky, um, I don't want to hear it anymore. I've regained my health. I've lost weight. I'm putting on muscle. You're putting on pounds of fat. Um, it's not even, it's not even a question. It's not even an argument. I not even something I really need to talk about anymore. Um, but if we're going to sit around this holiday table and talk, talk about anything, it needs to be talking about how great this plant-based diet has changed my health, changed my life, made me a completely new, healthy person. While you following a fad diet built around animal products, I could go by any name, keto, low carb, this JJ Virgin skinny diet, go by anything. Uh, while you there are hemorrhaging your health, putting on fat, and um, slowly become a, a burden to your family, just like every other relative at the get together. So you could go that approach, or you could just say, you know what, Cousin Buck, I got you a gift. And uh, if you have any questions, let's talk. Let's talk. But I don't want to talk about how great this diet is that's put fat on you and uh, you know got you on medication. So uh, that is something that possibly could happen at your holiday get together. Maybe you take a different approach to it, or maybe you take the Gabriel approach and go right in head first and uh, have a little fun this holiday season with some family uh, members. 
All right, let's see here. Marley said, he said, uh, he's loving the new book. Yeah, Marley, I'm loving to hear that. He said, if you haven't yet, make sure to get my book and the recipes are so good. I'm so glad to hear that, Marley. That's that's wonderful to hear from a great friend and uh, someone that I know so many look up to. So that's a wonderful thing to hear. Sherry says, my daughter and son-in-law live with me. Their diet is horrid. If I ate their food, I would be so sick. I can't stand grease and oil or meat. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It is tough, especially if you're living with those people. Um, but all you can do is two things, right? I talk about it. I, you know, I talk about, you know, kind of the, the aggressive approach you might say with family and loved ones because I get tired of sitting around a holiday table and hopefully a time to celebrate and, you know, relive the wonderful moments of the year. And all I hear is uncle Buck and aunt Becky, you know, moaning and groaning about their new prescription. Their doctor put them on the 12 pounds they gained this year. And the, you know, how horrible they're feeling. I just, you know, I like to, I wish that was left out at the holiday table. It's normally not um, because everybody gets upset when, you know, not, not so much me, but if someone were to come to the table and start talking about that plant-based diet, oh, don't preach to it. We don't want to hear, well, I don't want to hear about your ailments, you know, if from what you're putting in your body. So that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. But here's the two things that I have found that uh, are really, really solid ways to change those family, loved ones, friends that you really, really do care about. And and it's not going to happen, right, by being aggressive or yelling at them or preaching to them this or that. It's going to happen by two things, and those two things are love and leadership. And it can be hard for some people, and it can be easier for others, but uh, the two things, love and leadership, mean this, right? If you really, really, really do want, and if you're living with someone, if it's your son, your daughter, your grandparents, your cousins, your aunt, you know, people you really care about, if you really do want to see them not go down the path that most standard Americans are, right? A path of sickness, illness, in and out of hospitals, a burden to their family and loved ones, then... You've, you know, if you really do not, if you don't want to see them do that, then, you know, you probably do love them. And uh, if you love them, then you're willing to spend the time or wait and be patient uh, with the idea that, hey, they're not going to change overnight. And, uh, and I can't get upset if they don't change overnight. So number one, we love them. And uh, that means that, hey, if, if they don't change today, that's okay. I love you. I'm going to be here for you. If they don't change tomorrow, okay. If they don't change next year, maybe it's in a decade to where their health really starts declining and they say, you know what? I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm receptive to it now. I've got two options stuck in and out of hospitals, becoming a lifelong patient for the, you know, hopefully the golden years of my life, or maybe seeing about that plant-based diet you were talking about. You got to love them, right? It's a long time to, to deal with that. And a lot of, a long time to be sitting every single year at those holiday get togethers. Um, but after, you know, if you love them, then the second thing is lead them. You got to be, you got to love and you got to have leadership. And here's how it works out. If you love someone and you really want to see that change in their life, you really want to see them implement the healthy way of eating that you know how important it's been in your life, that you've seen the benefits personally, um, then you've got to be the leader. You can't, you know, lose 15, 50 pounds in a year, regain your health, go to junk food, vegan or standard American diet junk food, you know, still talking about how great a plant-based diet is, balloon up 25 pounds during the holidays, lose 15 pounds that year, be all, you know, this and that go back and forth, or you can't be the one who says you got to try this plant-based diet, but that, but yet you're sautéing everything under the sun in oil. You're putting vegan butters on everything. You're, you know, you're not eating a whole food plant-based diet, but yeah, you're talking and telling them about how wonderful a whole food plant-based diet is and how it could reverse their illness. Um, so you've got to lead them. You've got to be eating a whole food plant-based diet, a diet built around the simple starchy staples like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, sweet potatoes. And you've got to, you know, exude what you hope that they you know, is attractive to them in a plant-based diet, right? You're losing weight. If you had weight to lose, you've gotten off medications. You've, you know, you're not obese anymore. You're, you know, you've built up a, a level of energy that you hadn't had in decades. And those two things combined, right, is the equation that it is where you're going to see the most benefit in helping your loved ones. So again, you got to understand if it's, if it's a loved one and you really do love them, then you understand that, hey, uh, you know, I'll tell them about a plant-based diet, but it, there, there's so many things going in and out and, you know, different times a year and maybe they may not be ready. Um, but I know that in the meantime, between the time that they know I've adopted a plant-based diet 
And it may be six weeks, it may be six months, it may be six years, but in between that time, I know that I'm going to be leading them. I'm going to be following that whole food plant-based diet. I'm going to be losing that excess weight. I'm going to be getting off that medication. I'm going to be reversing my diseases, uh, chronic diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity, right? And over that time, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to become the person that I want to be, the person that a whole food plant-based diet enables me to be so that after six days, six weeks, six months, six years, if you really do love them and you've been leading them, they'll know exactly where to turn, exactly where to go, and exactly who they need to talk to about regaining their health. And hopefully, my hope is for you that that happens much sooner than later. We ne I never want to see a loved one go through things that I've seen loved ones go through, and I've seen loved ones who are going through them because of the way and the things that they're putting in their, dot in their mouth, grabbing with their fork three times a day, right? Slicing with their knife three times a day. I don't want to see anybody go through that, but I understand that there are loved ones out there, and you should understand as well, there are loved ones out there that all the preaching in the world, all the telling and talking in the world is not going to do it. What's going to do it is you've got to love them, because that's the key part. You could lead them all you want, but you could be preachy and you could be off, off put, you know, but if you love them, you know what tone you need. If you love them, you know what tone you need to, you know, to have around them. And then two, you're going to lead them. So six months, six weeks, six years, they know where to turn. And I've been lucky. I've been blessed beyond belief to have family, friends, loved ones be able to see, you know, that I not only they know I love them, right? That's that's not a question. And they've seen the leadership that I've taken in a plant based diet. So as soon as something's come up, as soon as they realize, oh my gosh, I got to make a change, as soon as that happens, they know where to turn. And, um, and I'm, I'm, it's not easy. But guess what? Family's normally not easy. Loved ones normally aren't easy. Changing our habits and especially changing the habits, lifestyle, diet, outcomes of the people that we care about is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Um, but if you're able to do it, I can tell you from personal experience that it's one of the most amazing, most rewarding things you'll be able to do on this planet is see your loved ones, see your mom, see your dad, not only lose weight, but, but regain the energy they once had. Just my dad, to hear him, right? My dad was... 300 pounds, teetering between 275, 300 pounds every single day of my life up until, you know, the point that the doctors told him that one of his replacement knees had had an infection in it and uh, they were ready to amputate. And that's the point where I, you know, stepped in. I, many of you know the story, but I had quit my job. I had Dr. Miller was still at uh, in Nebraska finishing up her, her PhD. So I made the, we made the decision that I would go home, take care of mom and dad, really try to save my dad's leg. Cause if you know, Doug Miller, you'll know that he's one of the most active people uh, on this planet. He wakes up in the morning early and he is on his feet pretty much every second until he puts his head back down onto his pillow at night. And so, uh, made that decision and being able to see that, being able to see my dad lose 75 pounds, being able to see him regain his health, save his leg, being able to see that um, is amazing. But beyond that, being able to you know have get-togethers or be there with your dad, knowing that I might not have been able to experience that, knowing that Dr. Miller and I's baby here coming up here, baby Miller, which is due the second week of January, there's a real good chance that they wouldn't have been able to know grandpa Grandpa Doug, right? They would not have been able to know Grandpa Doug uh, had he made that change in his diet. And that is, and, and that's all great, right? And this is what we're getting to. But to be able to have your dad look at you or to have your dad tell other people and know that you played an integral role in that to say, you know what? I haven't had this much energy. I haven't felt this good. I haven't felt this light on my feet, this able to do anything I want for 40 years, for 40 years, four decades. And um, to get to see that, to get to see that manifest itself in someone who you know goes to bed every single night bloated, swollen legs, three you know three hundred pounds, but then to get to see him lose seventy five pounds, regain his health, eat whole food, plant based diet, and uh, now on his feet every day. And you've got to pretty much throw a lasso at him to get him back in the house and say, you're done working around the house for the day. You're done doing this or that. Uh, you, you know you're you're gonna be around for a long time now. And uh, you don't have to do it all in one night. And so uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, so that's just something I hope everybody gets to experience. We'll just say that. We'll just say that. Um, Nicole's here. Thanks, Nicole. Marty's here She's from Canada. I'd love to have you here. Um, Gabe, you should take the nation. You should take this nation, my friend. Just, well, thank you so much. Uh, Nicole says, 
Love it. Lead the, love it. Lead them. You are so right. When I cook plant-based for my family and they eat every bit, I feel so good. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that you're able to put nourishing food into your loved ones. It really is. Um, Marty says, people must know that this is the most super superior lifestyle to live. Well, it's it's tough, but hey, it, you know, because not everybody does, but it's... Um, it's wonderful when people do have their eyes open to it. It definitely is. Uh, <laughs> Marty says, all those Uncle Bucks. I know. Everybody's got some Uncle Bucks and Aunt Beckys and Cousin Bucks and uh, Nephew and Niece Beckys uh, in their holiday, uh, you know, in their family for their holiday get-togethers. We'll say that. Uh, yeah, I I appreciate it. Marty says, I'm calling you Gabe the plant-based pastor. Well, that's funny. Um, but hey, thank you so very much for everybody tuning in. I, Dr. Miller and I, she's getting ready to get home from the university. Um, had a long day. And uh, she just had a checkup today. Everything's going great. So we're excited for that second week of January. We're excited to bring baby Miller into the world. We'll see how excited Bubbles and Bella are to bring baby Miller into the world. But uh, that we will have to see. Again, just wanted to mention it here as we're closing up the plant-based diet for beginners. I have the link here in the video. Check it out if you haven't. You can get on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Angus & Robertson in Australia, Amazon in Canada and the UK, and pretty much Everywhere major books are sold. The book is being sold. It's gotten some great reviews so far. It's being, um, it's being, I, I don't know how, I, it's, it's, it's has the chance, let's say, to really reach a lot of lives this year from some, some of the numbers I'm seeing from, from the lives that I know it's already touching so far. So I'm really excited about it. Whether you get a copy for yourself, whether you get, you know, one, two, three, four, five copies this holiday season, I really appreciate it. And if you do get the book, you enjoy it, um, leaving a, a review on Amazon really means the world to me. Just let me know how you like it so that others can see, hey, that's a great book. That's something I need as I'm adopting a plant-based diet as a beginner. So thank you all for tuning in. If you haven't heard it already, I love you. And uh, we we will be back tomorrow with another live stream. We'll sneak in a live stream uh, in between all those wonderful football games that are taking place tomorrow. But hey, in the meantime, eat some plants. Remember, more plants, more power. And uh, think about those loved ones. Really do. Think about that tonight. You're going to be around a holiday table. You're going to be around a lot of family and friends. Uh, think about those loved ones, those three, four, five loved ones that you really love, that you just can't imagine living in this world without. Um, how can you be a leader? How can you love them this holiday season? And how can you just slightly open that door to a plant-based diet, which you know has the potential to change their life and their outcome uh, and their health for so much the better. That's all we got for today. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow or in tonight's post. Uh, we'll see what tonight's post is that I'll share on the page and the Instagram. But uh, yeah, love you guys. We'll see you very soon. I always wave too early. So...